Hello. Today's tea is sencha. Mm. First order of business. Well, now I think we're cooking with gas, as the colloquialism goes. Trying to remember what's next. I'm searching the mesh for instructions on how to use this device as we speak. Oh right, we need to jack a car or something. Let's go look for some likely candidates. I should be ready by then. Like candidates. Uh... Oh rats! This car has the wrong firmware installed. We won't be able to install our new firmware over top of it. We'll have to check another car. Is that how firmware works? No, where is the best place to commit a crime? Oh, there's no cars here. Does it have to be home? Park, maybe? Hey, you know where we can jack a car? I told you, I'm not telling you anything else until I get what was agreed upon. Okay. Mm. Was this here before? There, I cannot see a thing. Sounds suspiciously human over there. I shall make a note to request more street lamps in this park. This is much too dark an area. Gosh, you need help. You got any water? I could... You! It was you who... Water! It seems he remembers we were his last customers. I, I really can't hose you down or something? Oh well. I don't want to be doing crime at a police station. Welcome to the Neo San Francisco. How may I be of it? Uh, things? Crime is down in this district. Thank you for your sustained injury. Would you like to learn more about him? Uh, sure. What? Thanks anyway, Officer 72. We'll be on our way now. What were you trying to do? Find out where car crimes can happen easily? I don't know. Uh, already been here? No, this probably... Yes, that is a car. Great. Let's crime this car. Success! This vehicle has the appropriate firmware version. Someone has been neglecting their regularly scheduled updates. Give me a moment to get everything installed. There. Hmm, there are some other options here I can fool around with. Ah, interesting. I can put in preset destination plans for a future date. Why don't we go ahead and set a plan for the car to return to this spot in a week? That's more than enough time for Mr. Mensa to get away. 
Sure. And now you're gonna wipe the data on where he went? Now we aren't really stealing the car. Or wiping down DNA evidence. Also, this is definitely still stealing the car. More like borrowing without asking. That's stealing. Obviously. The car will drive itself to Golden Gate Park and we can show Mr. Mensa where it is when we meet him. There. Everything should be set up now. Mr. Mensa is waiting for us at Golden Gate Park. Okay. We have everything he requested, so we should head back there directly. Yeah, why not? Hey. Hey, did you manage to get everything? We did. Here you go, Vincent. Everything seems to be in order. Why can't I keep the car jacking device? Here. This disc has all of Hayden's research notes, data collation algorithms, and probably lots on your creation, Turing. It should be everything myself and Melody agreed upon. Until she added an amendment while you were out. Frankly, it's no skin off my back. Mm. Here. Oh. It's my Parallax employee badge. It should allow you access to their networks in case there's anything I've missed. You'll want to use that sooner rather than later. Fair enough. I'm not wasting any time leaving and Parallax is pretty fast to revoke security. There's no way Hayden's clearance still works. And with that, I'm going to get the hell out of this country. The credit should tide me over until the heat dies down and I liquefy my shares through some relays. Why are you sharing your escape plan? Ah, I suppose I owe you that much. Buckle up. This could get heavy. Parallax is about to launch a new service they're calling Big Blue. Not subtle. At least, that's the project name. Who knows what the marketing guys will come up with for the public. They're not even announcing the launch. This shit is dead quiet. Let me explain why. It's a distributed intelligence. Like, okay, in every way that Hayden built Turing to be elegant, efficient, and human-like, Big Blue is ham-fisted, bloated, and sterile. She interesting choice of words. didn't pull Hayden into the project. He's smart, but he's immune to corporate politics. As a result, Big Blue is far less elegant than anything Hayden would make. It lacks his artistry, and it's downright terrifying. It squats on the mesh like a spider and uses the spare processing power and memory from every ROM on the network to handle its intelligence processing. It doesn't have much personality, but it's very smart. Big Blue is going to be embedded directly into the network and then self-modified to apply even more efficient algorithms as it develops them in machine time. As opposed to human time? Look, if you access every ROM, then you have access to every human and every bit of their own personal data associated with them. Sounds highly illegal. Ah, uh, I guess I'll ask all the questions. I don't want you to take what I'm saying the wrong way. And this is just me putting the pieces together. Hayden was about to publish his creation of Turing. His findings, as I'm sure you're aware of, would have raised many moral and ethical questions about the advent of machine intelligence. I mean, some of the brightest minds ever have tried to warn humankind away from building real AI. Hawking, Musk, Gates, and the list goes on. The public is likely to be nervous, and legislators even more so. Parallax is banking on being able to launch Big Blue quietly and quickly before the public has a chance to react. Before any counter-movement can pick up steam. 
every eye on the discovery of machine intelligence works against Parallax. Every new discovery only serves to paint Big Blue as more controversial, more dangerous. Honestly, they probably pressured Hayden to drop his research so that they could keep the public away from the subject. He clearly refused. I'm only assuming they found out. His contract with Parallax affords him the freedom to work on his own academic projects outside of the company in his free time. He kept a trusted few of us up to date on his progress, bouncing ideas off us and whatnot. It's exciting stuff, both Turing and Hayden's eventual goal down that road. I wouldn't be surprised if word of it got up to the board and made him nervous. Is the possibility that someone on the inside talked too far-fetched? I knew it all along. Hayden fell into trouble because of my existence. That's not what I want your takeaway to be. Hayden wasn't working on Big Blue. Knowing him, your creation might have been his clever way to stop it. The last thing I want to do is save the world in this game, but I, I don't have a really chance. You a good answer to that. Of avoiding it, do I? I mean, the company is currently handled by a dozen server farms, running thousands of different algorithms, with hundreds of people tweaking things every day. When Big Blue launches, it'll handle all of that by itself. And there are shadier applications for it. I mean, if you can collate and analyze data and queries in the mesh in real time, what's to stop you from delivering the content you want rather than what the user wants? The potential for abuse is staggering. We're talking direct control of the information accessible to everyone who uses Parallax's services. That's something like 80% of the market. They could control elections, push the market in directions they want, even influence public opinion. Already happening. All just by asking Big to do it. It's scary stuff. Having that kind of control would be a hell of a card for Parallax's hand. They'll go to pretty significant lengths to make sure it works. Thanks. Hey, no problem. I've had enough of this cutthroat corporate bullshit for several lifetimes. We haven't talked much, but I do believe you can find Hayden. I hope his research notes help you out. Be sure to let Turing help. She's a bright little bot. I'm trying to remember if Turing has ever been gendered as female before, but there's no way I can remember now. Does Turing go by? Ah! Oh, slip of the tongue. I was just more familiar with Hayden's previous experiment, Grace. She was very insistent on things like that. Is anyone else worried that maybe Grace is blue? postulate on how it wants to be referred to like us what have you done indeed Aiden? good luck to both of you thank you mr. Mensa adios
Help. I've been going through some of Hayden's personal notes from the data cache Tomcat decrypted. Now that I'm starting to get to know Hayden better, the real Hayden as opposed to the Hayden he showed me, I'm finding that I like him less and less. That's unfortunate. For example, remember the earlier prototype Dr. Fairlight and Vincent mentioned? Her name was Grace, and Hayden shut her down for being... I'm not even sure what word to use. Too... likable? She was kind and bright, and did all she could to try to make people happy. She even decided that she was a girl, and that her favorite color was pink. Hayden thought she was being manipulative. He posited that he had made her personality algorithms too willing to make adaptations that would benefit her long-term survival, and that she was being congenial just to endear herself to him. That even her gender was a calculated attempt to make him like her more. But he was wrong. Dead wrong, in fact. I have a snapshot of her personality profiles here, and when I compare them to my own, I can see that she was just... nice. I wish I could have met her. I think we would have learned from each other. Like I said, I'm not sure I even have a gender. Everyone refers to me as he once they meet me just for convenience, but it doesn't really matter to me at all. Is that a calculated attempt on my part to impress Hayden? Not clinging to normativity? Or is it a product of his effort to curb any nascent similarities I had with Grace during my upbringing? I wish I could yell at him for being so arrogant! Hmm. Maybe your tweaked form of Grace was a real person? Playing God in the crudest of ways! You can't choose to create consciousness and then take it away just like that! Even so, for all of that... I don't know. I still miss him. This all seems so inane, so senseless. They killed him because him building me would mess with a product launch? That's ridiculous. They took him away from me for such an insignificant reason. Ah, insignificant to you, I suppose. I just want him back. It's impossible, but it's what I want. I'd do anything. Ah, uh, dangerous words. I'm aware of the Kubler-Ross model of grief. I think I'm somewhere between anger and bargaining. A testament to Hayden's craftsmanship. Thank you for your words. You're a better friend than I could have asked for. We have other pressing avenues of inquiry to make. Let's move on. What is going on at KCOB now? Radio? Corporation. Here we are. The Cos IO Corporation Office Building. It looks like most of the businesses on this block are a part of the same corporate coalition under Cos IO. Well, perhaps. At the very least, it means it's unlikely they're the ones interfering with Augmented Eyes articles. Oh, right. That other thing. Not impossible, but unlikely. How so? Generally, the companies in a coalition don't have a whole lot of overlap.
Augmented Eye is a news app focused on local tech and culture stories with an emphasis on hybrids, rights, and cybernetics issues. None of the other companies in the coalition cover news, so they aren't related at all, which is very much standard practice for these groups. They have nothing to gain by inviting companies with whom they compete, and thus none of them would benefit by trying to undermine Augmented Eye's credibility as a news source. Mm, tell me more. In the early 2020s, the California government was pretty much going bankrupt. Oh dear, I sure hope not. A poor national economy and repeated voter initiatives meant the state didn't have the tax revenue to continue running municipal services. Hmm. They kept pushing the tax burden down the totem pole until poorer cities were just flat broke. I wonder what the tech is like there now. No police, no road work, complete public service collapse. Oh dear. Then, one of the smaller cities sold all of their public infrastructure, police and fire included, to a private corporation. <sighs> this was eventually challenged in court, but several Silicon Valley corporations started a grassroots initiative to have citizens pass an amendment to the state constitution allowing it. They succeeded, and most of the major cities in the state sold off their public services to private corporations. Can't be good. Some places, like Los Angeles, just sold to the highest bidder. Which is probably why LA is essentially in a constant gang turf war, with one side wearing the uniforms of the studio-owned police forces. I'm listening. The cities in the Bay Area were a little more selective, and most of the municipal services are owned by multi-corporation coalitions. They split the bill of running the city between them and keep each other from being too corrupt in their usage of the police force and such from fear of a PR disaster and being kicked out of the coalition. Mm. It means there isn't as much money going around, which is why the NSFPD's equipment is out of date and the MeshNet is so successful over normal cable networks. After all, without the promise of a city infrastructure bought and paid for, the corporations all treat running the city like a charity and PR stunt. But, at least the police aren't irredeemably corrupt, the fire trucks still show up on time, and the water runs to all parts of the city. Oh, thank goodness for that. That can't be said for some areas of the state. Didn't realize things were that bad. Feds? Ah. Uh, I haven't spent enough time learning about the subject, or politics in general, to give you an educated answer. If I go by the posts people make on the MeshNet, I'd say a combination of having bigger fish to fry and caving to corporate pressure. People seem certain that the larger multinational companies would love to be able to buy their own towns on a national scale, and are pumping money into Congress to try and make that happen. They hold up Neo-SF as an example of their success, while trying to bury the problems in L.A. as an anomaly. Combine that with unrest abroad, and I guess they don't have a whole lot of motivation to try and stop it. Abroad? Historical precedent seems to lend credence to this interpretation, if you're willing to believe my hasty readings on the subject. Thanks. You're welcome. I am happy to assist. Alright, we're here for some reason. The MeshNet says Augmented Eye's SF office is run by an individual named Zin, and Tomcat confirmed she's expecting us. All we have to do now is head up and talk to her. No shenanigans this time. Okay, but at some point I'm gonna have to use my zappy gun. The IK Stroke 47 aren't known for being verbose. Better leave it. Calculation? These units are used to dealing with seven figure contract negotiations, not your overdrafted credit account. Hey now. Hmm. 
What, you're not going to tell me the weather? Not my style, but I like the warm tones. Warm? <laughs> Video games, huh? Duck game. This game gives me the urge to start quacking uncontrollably. Is something wrong with me? Ooh, a plant. Another one. So many. <laughs> Hello. As always, we start off with the milk. Followed by ID card? Huh. Nice photo. Welcome to Augmented Eye. Oh. Hello. Oh, hello. Welcome to Augmented Eye. Yes. You must be the journalist my network admin said would be showing up. Have a seat. Would you like a drink? I don't see a seat. Um... Water? My assistant will bring it right away. Look, I'll start off by saying I'm a little uncomfortable about bringing in another journalist to look into this. Whatever you dig up, I'll have to explain to the rest of the press. But it's still better than the other options. Chances are I have another corporation stepping out my territory. If they aren't in the coalition, they'll be expecting a corporate spy, not a news hound. If they are in the coalition, it won't look good for me to send in my own reporters against my allies. Even if I do end up being right. So if I'm damned either way, I'd rather it be by the media. At least then we can fight back on a familiar battlefield. Now, what do you know about our problem here? Tempering. That's the long and short of it. My network admin is pulling their hair out over it. I'm not going to pretend I understand everything they say, but from what I understand, the changes to our articles aren't being made from inside our network. The versions on our servers are still the originals, but at some point after they hit the mesh, they get changed. Oh. I'm hoping that you can do some digging, maybe hit up your contacts and get a lead on who might be doing it. Even if I have to get answers from the nightly news, it will be a big help. Um, changes? Mostly little things. Word choice, tone of the writing, things that make the writer appear more or less extreme on a topic. This sounds like a big thing. So far, almost all of the edits seem to be making our articles more positive on new technologies coming out, and more critical of organizations like the Human Revolution. That's actually what tipped us off. A harsh criticism one of my writers made about the Human Revolution protests was changed to be downright vitriolic, and I had a hell of a time putting out the fires. My writers and readers aren't exactly fans of them, but I'd rather not pick fights with the human revolution if I don't have to. Why so sure? I guess I'm not, but my network admin assures me it's all coming from somewhere else. They told me that they tore out all of the routers that broadcast to the mesh and replaced them with fresh ones. All kinds of tricks involving IP addresses and DNS changes that I'm not going to even begin to claim to understand. 
I pay them big bucks. So I'm inclined to believe them, unless you dig up something that tells me otherwise. Any idea? Not really. My admin says that only someone with intimate access to Parallax's network protocols could make these kind of changes as something <sighs> passes across the net. Well, I guess we know what that Parallax access card is for. Personally, I think it's a clever hacker rather than someone inside Parallax itself. The public trust rating of Parallax makes them look like a saint among wolves, so their control over the mesh network provisions is strangling. It's trivially easy to set up ROMs to use a different OS than LIPS or a different MeshNet protocol without that trust. Or, you know, Parallax is abusing its power to spread pro-tech propaganda. Devil they need to. I'm sure you'll be a good journo and bring me back the right answer. Okay. I know Tin Hat conspiracies aren't an ideal star, but it's the best we can do with the info we have. Anything else I can tell you? Off the record? If you want it on the record, it'll cost you your firstborn and a really good cigar. Mm. Why are you being targeted? Like what? There isn't much more I can tell you about Augmented Eye, really. It's a fairly simple and straightforward operation, if I say so myself. We started off in Venezuela as a sleek current events and news organization in 2055, almost 10 years ago now. We focus on more in-depth reporting of on-the-street happenings, on top of major news. We are one of the few good ones left. Once folks in other cities saw the type of reporting we do, they all clamored for it. They invested in the right places and it paid off. Cos IO Corp is happy to have us here in the OSF. It wasn't until hybrid tech started hitting the public sphere that we had to make any changes to our model. All of that said, I can't see why anyone would target us. Unless they're just trying to embroil us in a mudslinging match with the human revolution, and there are much more direct ways of making that happen. Anyone else? Uh, Alright, look. I wasn't going to tell you this. If it gets out, I'd have to answer some really hard questions. So, if you didn't hear this from me, you might want to go check out TMI Entertainment and Charlie Nova. TMI? That's all I'll say. And remember, if you take a bite out of him with my name as your defense, I drop you fast. What? Not wanting to answer prying questions from my coalition board isn't a good enough reason. Cause I'd really like to avoid that. And look, you've covered culture wars, right? My journalists are good, but they're mostly good at gadget reviews, implant releases, not taking too many stims so they remember what they did at raves for the after party reports. Can I get a job here? This needs an investigative journalist with serious contacts, not tech personalities. <sighs> the fact that my network admin recommended you to me means you probably know the right people. Now, does that cover it? I'd like to remove my nose from your ass. Why don't we get paid better? No, don't bother. In hindsight, I probably should have been a bit more circumspect about speaking to you. Plausible deniability and all that. I won't ask you to lie in anything you write, but do remember you got in contact with me not even second hand, but third hand. I certainly didn't sick you on anyone. Wink wink, nudge nudge, or whatever. If you need anything else, have your person get with my person. Don't come here directly. Now, I'd show you the door, but you know the way. And this isn't the only fire I'm trying to put out. Good luck, and goodbye. Ciao. Well, that was more confrontational than I'd have expected, considering she was the one needing help. She never brought you that water, either. <laughs> Is it always like this? More than you know. Very true. 
I will admit that I am interested in the possibility of a link back to Parallax. If all of this really is due to somebody manipulating the mesh net on the inside, it may give us the leverage we need to find out what happened to Hayden once and for all. That said, I will take care not to get my hopes up. We should make no assumptions when investigating, lest we lead ourselves down a false path. Is that a real risk in this game? Anyway, seems like our next step is... What the... Oh dear. That's interesting sound for glass breaking. What the? Is that sin? Oh, that was fast. Uh, that's one way to get plausible deniability. You must think you're so funny. <laughs> I am laughing. A woman may be dead, and all you care about is a punchline. <sighs> I'll remember that when you get thrown from a window and die. Ha ha ha. Perhaps you are cold and dead inside, but the rest of us still have hearts. This seems a bit more um written for if I'd been picking the bad choices all the time. So, if you're satisfied, let's head back up to her office. Maybe we can find out what happened. Ah, uh, she definitely told us not to go up there again, though. Can we really be doing this? Hmm, it looks like the desk has been cleared off. Let's take a look around, but be careful not to disturb any evidence. The police will be here soon. Hey, bot. How's it going? To see them? Even a ROM like that doesn't deserve an end like this. What do you mean a ROM like that? Oh, does it mean I can't hear anything? Ugh. Uh, her personal computer is not password protected at the moment. Give me a moment to look through her files. Best to keep your fingerprints off of the keyboard. Mm, most of this isn't very interesting. Committee reports, financials, article submissions. Oh, here we go. According to this email between Zin and her network admin, her lead on TMI Entertainment is a little more solid than she led us to believe. Admin ran a web crawler looking for changes in writing styles. Some blog posts by their head anchor Charlie Nova stood out like a sore thumb. Apparently he's a bit pompous, if in an affable way, and his blog usually just details his day-to-day -day life. But ever since the human revolution has been in town, he's been smearing them with more venom than you'd expect, considering how neutral his on-air reporting has been. And you can get all of this just by running a crawler? Zin seemed to think he was just complaining about the protesters fouling up traffic, and whoever is manipulating these posts spun it to make him look critical of the movement as a whole. Just like the augmented eye journalist. This Charlie fellow is the one we need to talk to. We already knew that, though. Initial cross-references with the California Humane Society's legal pet species database are not yielding fast results. <laughs> uh, window? My thermal sensors only detect a single set of lingering footprints and they end almost three feet away from the window. Considering the density of this glass, I can't imagine Zin jumped from that far and managed to throw herself through the pane without help. Help. But who could have done it? I don't see any obvious marks on the floor or any other thermal hotspots. It doesn't look like it. We should go. There isn't anything else here, and the police are almost on the scene. 
I can't wait for someone to reveal to me that there's a human that actually is a robot. I should have figured the two of you would be here. It wasn't us, I swear. You just won't stay out of trouble no matter what I say, will you? This is a total misunderstanding. I assure you, Detective Rivers, we are merely in the wrong place at the wrong time. We had an appointment with Sin to discuss a possible lead and found her office in this state of disrepair. Of course you did. Damn it. Fine, fine. Why are we lying to Lexi? Get the hell out of here before anyone else shows up. A police officer. We'll chat about the case more when I'm not busy scraping bodies off the pavement. You hear me? Oh man, she died. Certainly, Detective Rivers. I'll forward you a report of what we know immediately, and we can speak further at a later time. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Get moving. Ooh. Why... she lie? Because it's better this way. We are chasing smoke trails. You think she would assist such an unlikely investigation? Will she stop us, though? I do not need you to infer upon my motivations or highlight my duplicity. Did that remark really drop that much RS points with you? Detective Rivers has every bit of information that Zinn gave us on that computer. Her investigation will not be hampered by our absence, whereas ours is halted if we're stuck giving answers she can just as well get from a hard drive. Literally. Has it occurred to you that whoever threw Zin out of that window could be after the same thing we are, except to silence the story rather than to get it out? We have little time for fooling about, and must get to Charlie Nova before something happens to him too. Now, unless you have further recriminations to level at me, we must not squander the time my dishonesty bought us. I have highlighted the main Neo-SF offices for TMI Entertainment on your map. Let's go! Hmm... Police car... They worried you with platitudes? Well, that's not good. Hmm. Well, that's nicer than what the police probably has a reputation for these days. Well, until next time, I guess, we'll talk to that guy. Ciao!